from wrong. Turn to sing together. We are going to begin with hymn number 49 from our CGS. Hymn number 49, once in Royal David City. You are welcome to the house of the Lord on this lovely Sunday morning, the first Sunday of the new month of December, the last month of the year. We thank God for what he has done for us thus far. We are looking unto him for the completion of what he has started and that is this year, 2017. We have just about four more Sundays to go, and then we say bye-bye to Jesus Terry 
to 2017. All glory and honor be unto his name. A similar warm welcome is extended to our internet audience, wherever you are. We pray that the Lord whom we have gathered to meet with and to be blessed by here this morning, we do the same for you wherever you are. He will bless you. He will answer your prayers. And should you live locally and you like to be part of this service physically, you are very welcome. This is the Apostolic Faith Church, the branch on number 13, Penn Hill Road in Bexley, DA5 3EP. You are most welcome if you're able to come and join us. But if not, you can as well just enjoy the service wherever you are, and we know that the Lord is going to bless you. Amen. Well, it is the um, festive season, and we like to be in that mood right, right away. Once in a royal Davis city, we start with that and a couple of more songs. Let's take verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 5, and 6. Brother Mike will come forward to lead us with this song and a couple of more other songs. God bless you. <laughs> and S, two, zero, three. This is the time for us to be appreciating God, to be thanking him. This is the time Jesus came down in the form of a baby to take away all our troubles and sorrow. Amen. So we are rejoicing from the beginning of December because God is already here. Yeah. Two, zero, three. We'll take two verses, one and the last. Two, zero, three.
I will tell you, cross on thanking God. Give thanks with a joyful heart. Amen. Because it's time to thank God. Yeah. This is a time that we have to be praising God for everything. Yeah. We have gone through 11 months of the year. Yeah. And we're on the last month. Yeah. And God will see us through. Amen. Let's sing this uh, thanking to God uh, cheerfully. Song before prayer is going to be 229. 229. S is an S. Triple S. 229. S is an S. 2, 2, and 9. It's only four verses. So we take two verses sitting down and two verses standing up. And at the end of the last verse, we're going to remain standing while we shall be led in prayer. 229.
Jesus, we praise you. Amen. Jesus, we glorify you. Amen. Jesus, all honor, glory, adoration, praise be unto your name. For you reign above the thrones, above the world is in your hands. Nothing is impossible with thee. For with God, all things are possible. All glory, honor, accept our thanks. Accept our praises that we are alive today, that we can breathe today, we can see today, we can hear today, we can speak today. Our bodies are functioning, all tailored by your hand, with your creative power, all the organs in the right place, nothing misplaced, blood flowing directly through the right veins, food going directly to the right system. Oh, glory, honor be unto your name. Our children have gone to school. They have come back from school. People have gone in the air, on the sea. On Father, come down. Take control of this remaining service. The few songs remaining, take control. When the person who you, you want to use this morning to dish out the word from us, please, Lord, anoint him. Anoint him. Anoint him. Let us go home blessed. Let us go home filled. Save this morning. Sanctify this morning. Baptize this morning. Heal this morning. Provide this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.
scripture reading is taken from the epistle of Paul to the Apostle Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. So the Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 to 15, I'll read. Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yeah. 10, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Yeah. 11, in whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. 14. Brought out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Amen. 15 and the last. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphantly over them in it. Do wrong and get by No matter how much you may try Nothing hidden can be Everything he doth see You can't do wrong and get by. There is a God who's standing at heaven's door. He's looking this universe o'er. And he sees each mortal with a searching eye. You can't do wrong and get by. Out into the darkness you alone may go and seeds for the wicked one so there's an eye that's watching from the throne on high. You can't do wrong and get by. You can't do wrong and get by. No matter how much you may try, nothing hidden can be. Everything he doth see. You can't do wrong and get by. Secrets, everything you do, he knows if your life is untrue. You can ne'er deceive him, there is no need to try. You can't do wrong and get by, you can't 
do wrong and get by. No matter how much you may try, nothing hidden can be. Everything he doth see. You can't do wrong and get by. I want to us to share together this morning on three important steps. You can join me to read, so I read along. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, I will read verse 22. And they shall look unto the earth, and behold, trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. I just want us to picture the life that we lived before we knew Christ, the life that any sinner among us may be living, and to imagine those of us that God has helped, to imagine what we have left behind and how we can continue to move forward. And when, say, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness, it's very possible that you misinterpret spiritual darkness to be physical darkness. There are different things. <laughs> When you are in darkness of the spirit, it's only the spirit that can interpret the level that you are into. Physical darkness, you turn on the light and it is gone. You can, you can wait till the sun comes and the physical darkness is over, just like we are now. But spiritual darkness rages day and night and it takes someone who can interpret where you are. It takes somebody who can understand where you are to come to the rescue. So when we talk about dimness and anguish, it is dimness, it also connotes with dimness and, and anguish of the soul. And um, the same book of Isaiah, chapter 5, I will read verse 30. And in that day, they shall roar against them like the rolling of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow. And the light is darkened in the heavens thereof, inasmuch as this is describing what the future may be of those who refused to do the will of God. But that is already the situation for those who are refusing to do the will of God now. This level of darkness can only be removed by a, sup a, a supreme spiritual power. And many of us feel that there is nothing wrong with us. But obviously, if you are in darkness, there's something wrong, drastically. Dr drastically wrong and needs to be corrected and urgently. And God, in his infinite wisdom, has made the provision if we go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, I 
I want to describe a situation where you can find yourself or where someone else has gone through. I read from verse 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. When you are in trouble, that is what you see. When you are in darkness, that is what you see. You can get, we can get outside today and look. A drunkard does not really know exactly where and how things are formed. A sinner is like a troubled sea. Yeah. All you see is void and emptiness. And within that emptiness, you are driven still to commit more. You are driven still to do worst. And you do worst, and they become worse. And you dip yourself in more and more. So, when he said, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form. God has created the earth right from Genesis. That is how it was. It was without form, and God spoke and said, let the, let, uh, the firmament that has occupied the, the middle part, let it disappear to the, uh, to the heavens, and it disappeared. And then the rest to form water, and it formed water. So by this time, the earth has already been created. There was a form. But this is describing the situation of someone that is in sin and is in trouble and is in darkness. You rise, you rise up in the morning, you see the world without form. Everything is negative, and life is difficult. Because you have no Christ. Or some people just think that Christ is about. There's no theory in the gospel. There's no, Christ is not theory. It's not some, theory is the one that you say with your tongue. And, it, and, and, and then no practicalities about it. It's not, it's not um, an affirmation of lifting up our hands. It's the reality. You do those things that others despise, and you feel that it is right. Then you are in darkness because you have not come out of it. You are in darkness. And then you, the earth without form where is a repetition, a repetition, a repetition of the same act of corruption against God. Have you heard the mountains? And lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the beds of the heavens were fled. 26. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place of a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down, and the presence of the Lord, and his fierce hunger, by his fierce hunger, it shows the picture of how life was with us. It shows the picture of the life that some of us are currently going through. In everybody, in each and every one of our lives, there is something somewhere. And that thing should draw us to Christ. One of our brothers has been giving us his testimony. Every time he would stand up, he said, I was mad. He said, I was mad. He, took, he said, I took so much of these uh, drugs, or the marijuana, or whatever you call it. He said, I walked on the street. I didn't know exactly where I was going. Things. Life was darkened. He, he said he had, um, one of the days, he said he was walking on the street of Sapele, and a voice came to him and said, go to the apostolic faith church. Someone that never knew the apostolic faith existed. And for some of us that are here, 
there are several there are several tendencies. There are several reasons. There are many reasons. One to each person, two to each person, three to each person, why we are here. And we have to, we have to see it as a divine plan of God for our own deliverance. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we have to see it as a divine call of God that God has loved us. Many of us, we have gone through that situation described in Isaiah, no, in Jeremiah. You wake up, you see the mountains, and they are quaking. You wake up, you see the, the, the world is without form. And in your own mind of minds, you believe, I am all right. Because that, that is what Satan expects that you should say. That is what the devil thrives in when he has taken us to push us to the wall of confusion that we are not able to get out of, that we don't recognize the source of deliverance. The devil is very happy. But you know, thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Lamentation chapter 3. What did Lamentation say? Chapter 3 say, from verse 1, I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. Affliction is not something that we like to see. It's not something we want to see, but obviously, it's in, it's inescapable. But it's not the divine will of God that we should remain in affliction. It's not the divine plan of God that we should remain in affliction. But when the Bible records to say, I'm the man that has seen affliction. It means he has seen a lot. More like, most likely than any of us here has seen. Most likely than all of our afflictions combined. So as far as what we have seen is but a little thing. It will not go into, the, it will not go into records as if we have seen something to be read from generations to generations. Verse 2 of the same year, Lamentation 3. He had led me and brought me into darkness, but into, into, he had led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Satan does that and continues to attempt to do it to each and every one of us. Darkness. Darkness, darkness. And I still want to emphasize, please, don't mix spiritual darkness with the physical darkness because they're not the same thing. What God is leading us through, what God wants us to see, is showing us who we are or who we were so that we can appreciate the power and the deliverance that God is able to do for us, yeah. to bring us yeah. out of such a situation. Verse 3, surely against me is he turned, and he turned his hand against me all the day. And Satan never let go. When he turns, when he gets you, he will misdirect you. you See, what you should think is right, you think is wrong. My grandmother used to tell me a story and, uh, of somebody in the neighboring village. The man was so, whether he was sick or whatever happened, he said when the sun is shining, he will carry his umbrella and pull it out and say that, ah, ah, that the rain. He's beating him. Rain is beating him. Rain is beating him. He will carry his umbrella. But when it is raining, he will then drop the umbrella that the sun 
is shining on him. Many people are in such a life, in such a confusion, in such an inability to distinguish what is what. What is good, what is right. What is wrong, what is not unacceptable. And, and, and the devil makes sure that he thrives. He's happy when he sees anybody. When we preach salvation, and to them, it's like an old story. That Satan is happy. They will, that one have gotten that one forever. Unless, unless, unless he, he, decides, he decides to leave me. He decides to think otherwise. You know, God always gives us that ability to think otherwise. To think outside of the box. To think out and just get out of it. But you know that some people, they just seem to be immersed in it for so long. And you wonder, what is going on with this person, with that person? May God help us. Amen. That Satan doesn't have the grip of us. Because when he gets it, he doesn't want to let go. Unless God twists your mind, whether young or old, it's the same stage of situation. That there has to be an opening, like God opened to Nebuchadnezzar to see that he was in the forest eating, um, eating grass for seven years. Once we see that opening and we take advantage of it, then there is a way out. That's why God wants to remind us, as he used to remind the children of Israel, they are suffering in Egypt. Say, so is that what you want to go back into? Is that not what you're craving for? And we'll remind them of their suffering in the wilderness. Is that what is important to you? So, for a sinner that is still deep in these troubles, you see, the word of God can never lie. It's true 100% from year in, year out. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm standing here before you by the grace of God. Tomorrow, someone else will stand here. We come, we go, we come, we go. The Shakespeare said that the world is like a stage. You have one actor at a time, the one player at a time, or maybe a group they play and they finish. The world, the world moves on. But it was on God's foreknowledge, yeah. it was because of his love and care that he sent us Jesus Christ. Yes. And we must appreciate that. Yes. We must appreciate that God loves us yes. so much. It doesn't matter how many times we say it, we sing it as a song, that he sent Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to die for us, yes. to open our eyes, yes. to open our understanding. Yes. We must live to appreciate that. And you know, if God says that a thousand years in his eyes is like a day, so we, are not, we, we don't live enough to even thank him enough. If God has given you a brain that has accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ, thank God. If God has given you the brain to know that other people have accepted the gospel and you have not accepted it in full, thank God that you, you understand that yeah. and that there is, there is room yes. for you today. Amen. There's no point, there's no need for delay. And that is why God tells Jesus Christ in his love, um, came for our sake. And that is why we have a season like this, to rejoice for that which Jesus has done, to celebrate because of that love of Jesus Christ. In this lamentation that we read, he was then looking 
for his own and a way out and how the situation cannot continue to overwhelm him and in Colossians chapter 2 that we read Jesus Christ came Amen. and put three things in action for us Colossians 2 14 first thing was blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us. Amen. First action, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. First thing Jesus Christ had to do. For the youngsters, you may not understand this concept of blotting. If you started school when we started, and we, you had all these things when literally not in existence in those years, you had the nip as a pen, you have the ink, you dip your nip, you take it out, you write, and you see the, the, form, the, the, the ink forming on the pen, then you have a blotting paper. You put it over it, and it takes off all the excess. And then you see your writing coming through. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm too old, neither will I say I am too young. But I did use the nib. There was nothing else to use. It was after a while that the ball pen came into e equation, that you had the ball pen that would, would write and continue to write. Mm. Otherwise, um, our pencil, the, the, you had the pencil, and you had the pen, and the pen was the nib. And we would, the pencil, we call it uh, pencil of saliva because you constantly have to dip it here before you write. And I do not think that it's too, far, it's too far ago, but it's the reality of the life that we live today, that life has moved on. Yeah. And there are a lot of you sitting down here, see, when I, was, when I was still in school, I would be teaching, I see the, you're teaching children how to send email, and then you see, they see CC. You say CC stands for carbon copy. They've never known what is a carbon. <laughs> And sometimes then I have to take a carbon and I have to take a paper and say, when you write in this one, then it shows on that one. And that is why we say carbon copy. And so or people can say carbon copy of the father. That means it looks exactly like the father before they get to understand. So blotting is the same principles. And I think uh, those, but you know, the blotting paper, to cancel what Satan has written against us Amen. is in the hand of Jesus. Amen. The blotting paper that we used Amen. in those days was in our hand. We could we can manage. Amen. But one thing is sure, for every single man or woman that is born into this world, Satan has a written plan for that person. And also God has a written plan for that person. That is why Jesus is warning us that the first thing that he had to do on our behalf is to cancel the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us and contrary to us. Because if those handwritings, when I looked at, took my dictionary, um, nowadays, you don't have to even open a dictionary because the world has moved on. You go on the internet and you just ask a question and you get the answers quite speedily. I say, okay, what, what really are these ordinances? What does ordinances mean? I was told that it's like a law, a decree, a formation that something that has formed over a period of time and cannot, a statue 
to, when, you, when you put them in perspective, mm -hmm. then you see that it was meant to stay. The, the handwriting of the ordinances that were against us were meant to stay. They were sealed by the devil on, to stay on our head. And Jesus said, the first tackle that I'm going to do is I have the spiritual foresight Amen. to cancel those ordinances Amen. of the handwriting of the devil. Amen. And once Amen. he has done that, he knows that he has won the battle. Amen. You see, so, so now we have the privilege to appreciate that that was a remarkable work and he only is the person that can see it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And we have the privilege to return and, and worship him and thank him yeah. and say to him, yeah. thank you for a season like this. Yeah. And then give our heart and life in appreciation of that to him. Yeah. Because this thing is not easy. And because the devil has pushed people to a lot of serious confusion in darkness, they're looking for a way to bypass that action of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that is why they believe that a fellow human being can do the work of God. It's impossible. That's why they go to consult a fellow human being who thinks they know things about the spiritual world. And then it becomes counterfeit and counterproductive. Yeah. Because that person, the fellow human being, cannot scratch the surface of the powers of Satan. Yeah. Only Jesus Christ has the power to break that seal. Yeah. And, and he has given us the opportunity Amen. to do so. Amen. You see, he is a great God. Yes. And after he canceled all those handwriting that was against us and contrary to us. Mm -hmm. He said, and took it out of the way. Amen. 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 He said, Amen. See, to take it out of the way. Yeah. See, if, if I want to move like this and there's something here, I can't move. Mm -hmm. And Jesus understands that there's a barrier. Yeah. I can't, if, is it, if I, if I blot it out and canceled it, and I still leave it there, it's more likely to pick it up again. Yeah. But in order for me to move forward, Amen. he said, Hallelujah. he took it Amen. out of the way Amen. so that I can have Amen. the means Amen. to move, Amen. to thank him, Amen. to worship him, Amen. to adore him. Amen. That is what he, came, he, he has done for you yeah. and for me. But there are some people here who have not tasted that privilege. Yeah. And that mes this message is for you as well. Amen. That has Jesus taken it out of the way for you? Yes. You see, this process of canceling and, and, and blotting out is basically giving us opportunity to reclaim. Yes. Yes. Is that I have canceled this one. I blotted out this one. Take it and you take. Take it and you take. Say, so follow me and, and you, you follow. You know, I don't know whether you've been to a situation. You know, I, I grew up in the village. When it was time to fight, we fought. When it was time to make peace, we make peace. But my father was a politician and you, I couldn't. Everything was what sometimes blood and thunder and we children have to follow. But for me to leave such a place, and be here today is because Jesus lives. He has a different plan for me. Um, I, my father, you know, he, he was a licensed double bar, double, you know, in Nigeria, is double bar holder. So he will carry his gun like this. And all of us will follow. When there is a dispute in the land, you, it's the same day they, they, they comb the land, the same day they, they, fire, they burn it with fire, the same day we plant. And he will be going around like this. And no one can temper. So that is what Jesus does for us. Yes. He comes with his angels. He says, I have canceled. Claim. I've canceled. Claim. I've canceled. Claim. You know, some of us are slow in that process to reclaim that which Jesus has already canceled and delivered into our own self. So let's, let's, let's be alert that 
whenever sin comes into, into the equation, you, there's no, there's, you are not going to move forward. That is why Jesus said that he has moved it out of the way. Amen. That we may move speedily. Amen. We move freely. Amen. We move victoriously. Amen. We move with liberty. Amen. Amen. And I see something. If, if somebody steals your love, your, uh, your beloved stuff, you feel bad. You feel denied. But Jesus is saying now, he canceled it and he has taken it out of the way. We don't feel cheated. We don't feel denied. You don't want to go back to it. You don't want to have it. You don't feel, oh, I don't have that sin again. No. You just, you're just moving now quite freely with authority and power that is given to you. Because he, is, he, has, he has given you a new life, a new perspective, a new vision. Yes. Somebody comes and steals and takes your only car and moves it out of the way. You will be grieved that you've, you've lost something. Yeah. But you've never, you're never ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. You can't be grieved because you've lost your sins. Mm. It doesn't work that way. Oh. It's one way. When we say one way traffic, it's one way forward. Yeah. And Jesus Christ, the same verse 14. Three, I told you three actions. The last action is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After he took it out of the way, he went and nailed it to his cross. Yeah. How can, uh, is, he nailed it to the cross. Yeah. See, when you look at the cross, it was not something, nobody was ever nailed to the cross that came back to live, except Jesus Christ. Is that when it is nailed to the cross, that is the, fi the finale. Finished. Finished. No more, no more going back to look for it. It's finished. So if he took, he brought it in, out, canceled it, took it out of the way, went to his expensive cross and nailed it on. It means that we have got overall victory. Yeah. You know, when you hear uh, the, the, the ordinances, the ordinances can be sickness. The ordinances can be poverty. The ordinances can be uh, wants. The ordinances can be, can be anything that Satan wrote against us. But Jesus said he has canceled them. Yeah. Glory be to his name. And move them out of the way so that we can feel freely, walk freely. And now he took them that to, and nailed it to his cross. Amen. So that means his very cross, we have a share. Yes. A share of victory. Yes. The, the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ is wonderful. Yes. You know, um, after he has nailed it to the cross, he told us in the same Colossians, chapter 2, verse 9, because, he says, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. After he has done all of this to us, he said, and ye are complete Amen. in him, Amen. which is the head of all principalities Amen. and power. Amen. So, Amen. by the grace of God, yeah. it makes us fair, feel free, safe, and secure. Amen. And at Christmas time like this, we have nothing else to rejoice than the victory that is Jesus has delivered to us. Amen. There are so many of us here. Yeah. I'm asking you the question, are you complete in him? Any, any sign in you of incompleteness, saved or unsaved, any sign in you of incompleteness, this altar is open for our prayers.
privilege we have once again to come before you, to look up to you, to appreciate you, to thank you for the great work that you came to this world to do for us. Lord, accept our thanks. Lord, accept our praise. Even as we look up to you now, we ask you to search our lives and remove and blot out whatever is remaining and take out of the way whatever is remaining and nail to the cross whatever is remaining. Give us victory, complete victory, total victory. Save souls now, sanctify, baptize the Holy Ghost and fire, heal the sick. Hear us now, O Lord. Thank you for everything as we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.